Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. We're going to continue our landscape studies and today, you know, I was thinking about doing a seascape and I think I'll push that off to next time. I want to show you a little bit more about how I go about changing a photo because I got some other really great compositional questions uh, about changing a photo. And I learned this from a lot of modern day impressionist landscape masters who always said that you don't go out into the field and just absolutely copy everything you say you take that all in and then you let a little bit of inspiration come out as well and there's others that will disagree with that and there's a whole bunch of let me let me just say this there's a whole bunch of different philosophies that are out there whether you agree with them or, or not you find the ones that work the best for you okay and um, those allowing me some artistic creativity into the landscape not copying everything I that I uh, see is uh, and I create a painting rather than create a photograph that works for me that's what I like okay uh, but like everything if you have comments or questions or anything drop them drop them down below all of the links and stuff that I uh, that I use for products and stuff that I use, the heritage paint, the acrylic paint brushes, everything you'll find in the video description of all the videos that we have here. Uh, you'll always see uh, those links right there, okay? And uh, don't forget to go over and visit Jansen Art Online. That's where you can scroll through all of our free videos. We have a free video site over there. And sometimes the navigation over there is a lot easier to go through the videos and find something that you're looking for rather than having to search through all these playlists and all these videos over here, okay? We're able to sort them a little bit better over there. All right, let's get into it. So I have this um, here. I've, I've sketched it out onto a board. This is a regular hardboard panel. It is 12 inches uh, this way and is 18 inches this way. I've printed off a reference photo. Um, this is one that you got, I got out of the uh, Google Images that was free. That was co It's copyright free so we can use it, but I'm going to change it anyway quite a bit. Um, but I like it as a mountain lake and one of the things I wanted to paint a, some more with you that I had lots of really great questions was reflections. And uh, so this one will have a lot of great reflections. We'll look at the photo, the actual photo down here with my palette. And like I say, I put it out. This is a quarter inch tempered glass palette that I do like to paint with. Got my scraper just in case uh, I decide to use that. Got my fusion brushes, my long handle fusion brushes. I do like painting landscapes with the long handle brushes. That allows you to step back here. That keeps a, uh, and I like the older ones. I don't like new ones. I like the older ones. That allows you to keep the tip of the brush a little bit softer and uh, get a little bit more impressionistic look to it. Um, Anyway, so here's the photo. We're going to be changing some things. I'm going to add, uh, you know, maybe a mountain or two back here because I think, well, a little bit of snow or something in here might be good. There's a lot of real heavy color and green all about the same here. You can see the atmospherics of the mountains or the hills here really easy. Um, and I might want to play that just a little bit more with another mountain, put a little snow and push everything back with atmospherics. I'll show you that. But the heavy green here, I might take some artist license here, break it up and put some and interject some nice yellows back into here to make some, uh, you know, sloping grassy plains and stuff like that that I like. And if I do that, it means I have to change my reflections. I got to remember to do that. Here's the reflections. And it's a really good, uh, this is a great photo for you to see here just how much darker the sky reflection. Now, here's that cloud reflecting right back down here. And look at how much darker the blue looks there up around from that cloud. So here's the line of the hills here. That's the line of the hills. Got a few rocks out here. I sketched it out to match this, but I might push the water out just a bit more right out. And I think I will. So I'll move the rocks and stuff out a little bit. Give it just a little bit of a shoreline. I might give a little shoreline in here. You know me, I'm gonna change it a little. <laughs> That's what I like to do. And like I said before, in so many things, it keeps me out of it. It keeps me in a creative mode, not a copy mode. And if and I'm just like everyone else, if I go into a copy mode, my painting becomes stiff and it doesn't look right, doesn't work well. So keep yourself into a creative mode. And one of the reasons how I'm one of the ways I keep myself in that creative mode is 
I change it. Okay, all right. So let's come back in, and we're going to uh, start the uh, the sky here. My colors, same colors I've used in every landscape challenge so far. This is the Hansa yellow, Indian yellow, yellow oxide, the um, naphtha red light, the burnt sienna, my burnt umber, thalo green blue, uh, thalo blue, ultramarine blue, red violet, and white. The sky today is leans a little bit more violet, so I'm going to start out with my ultramarine blue which is my blue violet and you can see that starts to get right over to that sky pretty well i'm going to lighten it up to about a right up here to a, right up a nine or so because it will darken down and i want to keep this light i'll add a bit of water i do have a cap of extender out here i doubt that i'll use it i might use it but that just uh, slows down the drying time of the paint a bit gets my or I use it a lot to make my color slide and, and as well I'm going to push some of this light and I can see right now after I put that on that I am going to want that a bit lighter so I'm just going to interject a little white right in here and I just go ahead and you know dip my brush right into it and push it in there because I, that helps give a little misty now back here I've added a couple of little bumps there for maybe a couple of uh, mountains back there and uh, I might like those. Now, you know, a good imp a good uh, way to paint that I like is I like to move my brush in some strong horizontals and verticals, and those uh, give good movement to your uh, to your painting. Go all the way out to the edge here too, in case we have sky holes. Um, but uh, they they work really really well uh, for. Uh, giving interest and that modeling interest to the sky. I'm going to darken this down a little more blue. Well, let's put a little bit of that lively phthalo blue into that. Even though I don't see it in the photo, that's, I do like that in there. I like to push a bit of that. It's a little bit more lively than the red violet. The red violet, the ultramarine blue is one of your oldest pigments. Of course, it came originally from the lapis lazuli stone and then um, it was synthesized by a French uh, scientist and where he was able to make it synthetically and that's why you hear see it sometimes called French ultramarine blue. Um, and But it is a weaker pigment. It is a uh, as far as a mixing pigment, it's a weak pigment. It used to be called the pigment of royalty but um, then the thalos, of course, came on in the 19th century and the more powerful mixing blues. And we have another blue, and I'm thinking about adding that to the line. Um, I'm going to be um, talking with, uh, you know, I design, for those of you who don't know, I design, uh, you know, paint systems. I've done that ever since 1983. I did my first paint, paint gold paint system in 1983, working for both oil companies and acrylic companies. And over the years, you pick out colors and everything you should like. And then we get new advancements and new colors in, and I always kind of test them. But I'm one that is, you need to limit, you're an artist. So I not only do I look, live my life as a chemist, but I live my life as an artist. And artists, we reduce down the number of pigments that we use as much as possible to give us greater harmony in our colors. And... So, but there's another advancement that this came, another blue that just came, and I'm really think of adding it. It is a more of a pure blue. Like if you wanted to get a real pure blue, you have to mix ultramarine blue and thalo blue together. Uh, it takes it more towards a, like a cobalt, which is right sits right between the two as far as the spectrum of colors. And uh, this other one was was discovered by mistake um, about, I guess it was about 10 years ago or so. Paint companies are now just, in, but it's called Yim Yim Blue. It's a, it's a uh, um, different chemical base. Well, I'm thinking about it. I'm going to be, uh, I've, uh, we're mixing it up into some of the colors, into some of our base. And I'm going to play around with it here this summer and see if it's something that I think would be advantageous to our painters. And... Um, and if it is, we'll add it. If I think that, you know, it doesn't give us any more working properties than what we have now, then we won't add it. That's what I, I like to do. But see all that movement. I like some of that movement in there. I like it lighter, almost to a white, right along. And we can just push some of that around. We're going to push some clouds in here and just, you know, model this all up. Just, you know, push this around. You know, I like to push my brush 
and pull my brush. I do like to, especially if I'm heading down towards a horizon line, I do like to get a, a, a little bit stronger of a vertical there. If you leave any kind of planes up here whatsoever, that helps you with the linear perspective of your painting. So you need some clouds and stuff, but you also need a few verticals every once in a while for linear perspective. It's always a great thing. Now I'm going to take some of this light and right down below, we have a very strong, is you're going to see right down in here, is you know where I want to really put a nice strong horizontal that will draw my eye back further back so I'll use my little tool like you've seen me I've talked about this before and uh, I'm just going to uh, use this to set up kind of a nice horizontal in here like that and no matter what my pattern says I'm going to follow that and then I'm going to go up a little bit now see here's the thing we're going to paint some of this out remember I always paint too big and I paint out. So that gives me a nice strong horizontal. But I have a point of a little, uh, the hill coming down here. And I have this one here. Now that creates what we call a tangent line. And I don't want to do that I, for greatest depth. And sometimes it's just the littlest things. It's just the, the uh, littlest bit of a mark of a color or something. Let me set this down. A little bit of a mark of a color or something like that will really affect the distance of your painting. Now I learned this from Lewis Ashton Knight who was, well I didn't learn it from him personally because he passed away in the late 40s, 1940s. But uh, he was, uh, you know, he's the son of a landscape painter, an expatriate American landscape painter. And uh, he did a lot of really great things in painting out through uh, Normandy and France. And I went over there and studied painted in the same areas that he did and but he'd always put that light way back and then he would always push a river and stuff a, a, so they didn't have tangent lines so no matter what you saw push like these back a little bit so we'll push these back hills back just a little bit more with and we can angle it a bit just a touch to bring it farther forward to match what you have but if i leave a little step between my blues and my mountains there like this is kind of going around the corner there a bit you will get a better depth to your painting does that make sense rather than bringing them to a point separate them that gives you a better depth to your painting and little things like that really make a difference okay all right so we're gonna I'm gonna put some trees in here and go a little darker but you know the one color that I do like to add into these and there's not really a lot of this because it's a lot of green is my yellows yellows brown siennas I like those kinds of colors I especially like my yellow so I'm going to uh, first take a lighter tan and I'm not sure just how yellow I want to make this, so I'll make it more of a tan. Some yellow oxide, burnt sienna, burnt umber, maybe a touch of blue or green, and some white. Just model this all together here. And let's just uh, pull some of this and some of this down at an angle here. Now I'm using a big brush. I could go to a smaller brush. That would make it a little easier. And that will probably be a little bit too dark by the time it dries. I'm going to go to a smaller brush. Probably be a little too dark by the time it dries. So I'm going to add a bit more yellow oxide and white here. And so I want some ideas of a. And in the photo, see in the photo you can see there's just a little bit of that yellow in there. I want to open that up. It's my painting. I want to open that up and I want to push more of that into the hill here and that'll allow me to get a little more texture there as well. Now we'll come in and we'll uh, push some other colors. Of course we'll do that art thing all over it but the uh, um, the thing is and, and I'll put trees and stuff on there but uh, that will allow me to get some of these colors in. Now I want to do the same thing but I want uh, you know on the other side but I'll make it a touch atmospheric. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Let's get that ultramarine blue in there and white into this so it gets a the color gets a touch more atmospheric here and we'll add some that could go touch yellower we'll push a bit of that into some of these back hills here just a bit so I'll put trees and stuff on it but I like the openness of some of the hills and things like that that have grassy plains or slopes into them um, I like that and, and so I add those in and uh, 
you know, sometimes you paint exactly what you see. But I thought, you know, this one is um, was real heavy in the greens and the trees. And so I'm going to start by opening those up just a bit. Let's put a touch, maybe a bit more atmospheric, a bit more of the blue. Now use the ultramarine blue because the ultramarine blue will gray it rather than make it really green like the... Uh, uh, Thalo Blue will. Thalo Blue is so powerful. It's a great painting color, but it's really powerful, and uh, it will green it up really quick. So we're going to put some blues and stuff over here. This is just helps me uh, see that just, just a touch there of those colors. And I can, now that I see that there, I can go a, a touch more yellow right in here, especially like right in this area here, because that'll give me the, let it go to the atmospherics over there. So this point and this point, you can, it, this actually comes a little farther forward over here. So, and that's what you look for. You start as you're finding your depth. So I might even go a little bit more yellow right in there, which will bring it uh, a touch farther forward. This is all changed. This is just your first look at everything, so it can all change. Let's get our um, ultramarine blue, maybe a bit of our burnt siennas in this. We'll go just a touch to the violet, so a little bit of violet into this, an ultramarine blue, and some burnt sienna here. Really nice color, a little more blue, a little heavier into the blue here there we go and we'll model some of this together with that i like to use colors that i have in the composition now this might be fairly dark we want to keep it i'm going to lighten it up value wise you want it we were up here that's our sky so that might be close it could be a touch dark so you know you want it within a couple values here and yeah that's just going to be a touch dark you want it uh, real close. We want to set it further back, so I'm going to lighten it up even more. And it's a lot more than you think. And sometimes you just have to put it out here onto your into your painting, into what we call color perspective, so you can see it and just see what that color is going to be. So we're going to push this mountain back here a little further back than everything else. We'll get some more hills and stuff, and then I'm going to set one a little further back, which means more light here. So we'll drop one a bit further back, and then we're going to put some blues and some atmospheric colors on those. But right now I'm just looking at the color setups of what I want to have for this painting. Let's model this violet with some of these yellows, a little bit of these greens here that are coming everywhere else forward, and that'll bring help bring the color forward right there, which we can do is we're going to bring those together. I'm going to, and it, you know, you always have a good idea where you're bringing light. I'm going to bring light in from the left on this, which means any of the uh, right falling planes here are going to get shadow. So let's take a little burnt sienna, a little bit of blue here, and maybe a touch of burnt umber, just a nice gray. Let's just add a few little shadows pulling down here under the mountain most of, so if lights coming from the left you're pulling down and to the right for your mountain shadows because lights hitting that way there so yeah that'll get us a good start right there and I brought those two points in real close to each other again I'm a left brain painter and this is stuff that I have to I have to constantly keep an eye on because I'm a left brain painter I'll bring points and stuff exactly into each other and it's not a great way to do things, you know. If you're a, if you're a, you know, a, le a right brain painter, no, you can get away with it. But left brain painters, we like things to uh, line up, <laughs> and that lines it up pretty well. All right, so let's take a little phthalo green blue, some yellows into that, little burnt umbers into that, a little bit of burnt of uh, ultramarine blue into that, nice grayed down kind of a, a greenish blue this could have a little bit more blue into it i don't want to get exactly the same color there as i have here i'm a little bit green but you can see some of the modeling of all of these other colors in there and of course this will dry down so let's lighten it up just a touch and let's push a bit of that right in there we'll change this this is obviously this is going to be a little bit dark so 
I'll change that. Maybe even a little bit more yellow and blue here. And I'll warm that, change that just a bit. There, and pull some angles, pull some angles. And again, we're looking to model, to get colors in here, some slopes, some nice color slopes there that, uh, you know, for our, for our mountains there. Let's take some of this color. Let's add a little burnt umber. Could also use uh, burnt sienna and more blue, which will gray all of that down. Let's lighten it up so it gets more atmospheric. And let's add a bit of that color in a more atmospheric and gray tone into here, maybe a bit of that into here, that's gonna give you your harmony. So when you're painting multiple mountain ranges, you know, carry those colors through. We might even put a bit of that right back here so we get a more of a receding plane there. And of course, we'll put the atmosphere into all that. Now, into this front plane, we can get some more blue burnt umber here and some of that green here. Um, and you know, another really beautiful green, especially when I'm working with, uh, oh, and you know what? That's, uh, I don't have any of that out. Boy, who put out my palette today? <laughs> Forgot to put out black here is black. I don't use it very often, so I'm not gonna give it too much, but boy, when I do trees and stuff, I do like to have the black and that, that, uh, Hansa yellow makes these beautiful, that makes beautiful colors for pine trees and stuff. So if we're going to have some of those trees and stuff showing up here, that might be a pretty color in there. And again, see, I'm just working on, I'm, I'm just trying to, and, uh, you know, to grab some of the colors that I think are going to, uh, you know, sit well into my painting today. And I'm not, you know, this is all stuff I can change, right? Where we can all I can change this really easy. Let's use a bit of this up and down here, and uh, you know I'll paint some of this sky and some of this back down into that again. But uh, and we'll carry some of this through and uh, back up over here where we're going to have the trees. And I might want some of this nice yellow and stuff in here and. I'm just modeling it up, dirtying it up with some of these colors. Most of this gets covered up by the tree, but uh, the trees that are gonna be there, but we'll push some of that colors in. Slight angles, move your brush around a bit. We wanna get rid of all the white sky holes. That's gonna give us better depth. Um, this is just a real nice way to, uh, to see a bit of our uh, of our uh, painting here, the mountain, the hills and stuff. And so it gives me our first look at them. And then I, you know, like I say, I always come back and paint different things. Like I'm gonna come back and put a lighter ridge mount, a hill right in there, pulling down. I like that opening up, you know, some places I'll let the trees run all the way to the, to the water, but uh, other places I'm gonna do that. and. Let's get a bit of this grayed color in there. Restate some of the things, and whenever I restate colors or or something or pull something a little different, I uh, I don't always like to use exactly the same color I've done before. There's a bit of yellow here. We could push a touch of that in there before it goes very receding there. Okay, let's take a bit of this yellow right over here. Add that in. See, I just drag. I'm using actually the chisel, but this is an old, old number eight uh, fusion uh, uh, flat. And so it fans out really, really fast and easy. And that's what I like for some of this movement and stuff. So I create that uh, little bit of movement. It starts to create, as you build that multiple times, see, it starts to create the little look of a hill, which is what I want. All right, now I'm going to go back to my bigger uh, brush here for just a moment, and uh, we're going to push in some of the some of the water. Now, the water, when you look at the water here, it's carrying all the colors of the reflection of the mountains, but it's still slightly darker. And look at the sky, how the movement of the the waves and ripples distorts the skyline here. So this is the skyline. And the waves and the and the uh, uh, movement of the water, the wind over the water, distort the skyline. 
And uh, so we're going to have to take that into account as well. But what I'm going to want to do is just take some of these colors that I have here, a little darker, just a bit of green. We're going to do this multiple times in here. So it's a little bit darker. And uh, I'm going to want to cast some of these colors both into the vertical and into the horizontal. This is where we get a lot of reflections pulling down. We don't really need to do too much of that now, but we will pull those reflections down. I got to get this a little bit more yellow. So you're looking to the colors of your hills here that you want to pull down, but maybe a touch darker here. So we'll pull those. We'll get a bit lighter, a bit more atmospheric over here. And so no matter what the photo says, I got to go off of what my painting says. Does that make sense? Um, a little bit more of this over here, this side. And we'll push that sky into there too. I'm going to want to break the edge of that light blue there. We're going to put that back in here. But um, let's get just a little lighter yellow. Violet yellow right in here. You could have that. Then we pick up a little more color here. That looks, that looks pretty good. So actually, I'm pulling the wrong way there. Um, if it's pulling this way, it's got to pull back this way. It makes the reflection always makes like a V. So you got to pull back that way to match the movement uh, of those hills and stuff there. Let's get just a touch darker green. A little bit of our black and yellow too in there. Just a bit of that green right along that edge there. That'll help us when we get that going. And see, I don't worry about being at a perfect copy. I don't want to do that yet. We will. You know, we will. This is your color setups. So you want your color setups to be nice, casual movements of color. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll change that later, okay? We'll change that later. Don't get wrapped up in a bunch of details that don't make any difference right now. Let's um, take this scraper here since I don't have my other one. other one right out here in front of me. I don't know what happened to it. And we'll scrape off some of this just a bit. Give ourselves a uh, little more working room here for some water. And we're going to go with our ultramarine blue. And it has a, a touch more lively phthalo in it here. And maybe a touch of violet into that make a pretty and even if a landscape if I don't see violet in it I love to add violet violet is such a lovely lovely color uh, into a painting and it's so much of the part of the color spectrum the spectrum of light I never you know and I studied uh, one of the things I did in college was I studied four years of physics so, college physics and working with light and stuff and I never you know never really you know you've heard of the ultraviolet spectrum you know the ultra the infrared and the ultraviolet but I never imagined in my life that it played that important part and, but violet comes out into the landscape and stuff so quickly and it does let's pull this right up into that I'm not worried about blending it I'm just going to do what I call blur the edge doesn't need to be wet just take one color override it right into the other there and uh, we're just doing the color setups right okay so let's grab some of this as it comes up over here it's going to get dark again and we're going to want to be a, a bit more specific um, with it because we're going to add some clouds in here but we're going to want to be a bit more specific with the stops and starts here of our blue and stuff because it's and we want to distort that a bit so I'm just pushing and just dabbing and pushing like this here this is what I love about the impressionism there because it doesn't look so bad as you're putting that on we've got a long ways to go but it doesn't look so bad right away here now I said I might want to move these rocks further out and uh, get some of those uh, other colors in there let's get the the darker more this is what i love about burnt sienna you see it burnt sienna a little bit of blue 
here. Actually, a lot of that ultramarine blue if you're using that one here. And just uh, makes beautiful colors. Let's put a few strikes of that. Look at how rich that is. And that really helps us pull the shoreline and that rock and stuff forward here. And gives will give the depth of what we're looking for. Let's put a bit of the green, a little bit of Hansa right with this. Maybe a touch of the brown, a touch of thalo blue. Get this kind of greenish tone that we see right in there. Right in there. Here. Pull that out just a bit. Let these... We'll do some stronger uh, verticals there as well, pulling that out. This nice dark tone, thalo green, burnt umber, some blue and burnt sienna all modeled up in here. Let's dab that into our real dark, core dark right up in here. And uh, I'm gonna put a little more, I like to, if I get too much of a dark in there like that, I like to break it up with a little bit of burnt sienna here. Sometimes a burnt umber, but a lot of burnt sienna. That gives me a nice, real, real core dark up there, which is nice. Let's take this, lighten this up with some um, of our yellow oxide. And uh, we'll, now, don't get too heavy with this. I'm just, I'm going to do really impressionistic trees here. Um, and so I'm just using and pushing and sliding the brush here and I don't want to be very careful not to get rid of all of your sky holes here. This is my three-quarter inch brush and it's an old one and uh, I love the old fusion brushes because they get these all of these fractured edges out there and I just have to be careful not to cover them all up. And I like that. And we have to decide if we're going to put that pine tree out that little bit further out. And I want to do something because that's a, a bit of a straight line. So I like it to come out a little farther here. Now, pine trees you've seen me make with all different kinds of brushes. And I do, depending on how it's going to fit into that particular painting. I just don't have one way. I kind of look at it how it's going to fit into that painting. That works pretty well. Now, I'm going to take some of that color, add a little bit of sky to that, and just work that lightly back through here. Again, that's good harmony, you know, but it's slightly lighter, slightly softer, and uh, it's the color of trees, so you're picking up some of those colors of trees. Let's take just a bit of that right back in through here. And we'll add even more. I like to add it several times. Add a few back into here. Should get a little lighter, a little bit more atmospheric as it comes back to some of these other places and stuff like that. But that starts to set it up. You can see the scene starting to happen here. That's the, the big part. You start, it's starting to happen here. So that's good. Let's get some, let's get some of our yellow uh, oxide our burnt sienna, maybe a touch of our blues, and a bit of light. This is that nice, uh, deeper color, sometimes a little green here. Deeper colors, but a little bit more on the burnt sienna side. Right up and through here. I'm going to go right onto the shore and right out into the water here. Right like that. There goes that rock I drew on. Always do that. I draw it on and then I paint it out. I'm going to close off just a touch more of this. I like to make transparent water. It's one of my fun things to make. So I'm just going to add that in, close that off a bit. It's an optical thing. I mean, it's a, it's a transparent water. It's actually very easy to paint. It's, a, it's an optical thing. So let's take a bit of our blues again and some light. Let's just put some more of that fun blue right down here. Let some of it override some of that uh, that sienna's there. Let's just get some of that in. And um, yeah, that works. Now I want to uh, give myself a nice clean area of lighter blue, maybe a blue-blue-violet sky color 
nice beautiful sky color here but just a little bit more blue so a little more ultramarine here back into that just a touch of this other blue it's just a that you really get to see as you start to lay in all these colors you really get to see just how violet that ultramarine blue is there we go there like that okay that's pretty good that'll work pretty well I'm gonna go back now to so I have the main colors you know kind of blocked in I'm gonna take a bit of this light color that's here some yellows uh, make more of a tan I like the gray that comes from blue and red here so from any of your blue and the red I like that I like reds and greens um, blues and reds with some of these make just beautiful kind of gray colors we'll lighten it up see what I'm gonna go for is this rock color that's right down here this rock color here is a little more yellow I'm a little bit more tan and red and that's okay I'll go back with more yellow later and uh, I'm just gonna kinda there's a couple rocks right there I really like I'm gonna bring this one rock that was just it's kind of off the picture a bit. I'm going to bring it out a little bit further here. And I'm going to model up some rocks out here along the shoreline. Just touch these in for right now. This is what I like about Impressionism. It's uh, just kind of touch and push those colors. Let's get a few little rocks here. The, the hardest thing I think about doing this kind of thing in a technique is to... Uh, um, make everything a little different you know I have a tendency to make the same repetitive strokes because I'm left-brained and so I have to concentrate on not doing that and so I turn and twist and move and push my brush in different ways to uh, c compensate that I'm going to take some of this kind of color and push just a touch of it along the edge here so if I want to develop rocks, they'll, I'm carrying some of that color back there, like that. Um, yeah, okay, now let's, so, see that gets you mainly in. Now we have that lighter horizon line here that we have, and that happens because of the angle of the light that we're viewing on. When you get a real low angle, the water turns from a real deep color to the light sky, very, very light sky. And so we have to make sure that we preserve that, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to just take a bit of my ultramarine blue and my light right in there and reset that. Uh, that could be a touch lighter. But I like the color not super mixed into the brush. So I do get a, a bit of color variation there. We'll drop that out. Now sometimes I let it just kind of fade into that other color there which gives you a, a broken up and kind of what we call an unknown there on the shoreline. And I like that. And uh, But it's not precise. You see, one of the things that when you start to paint a little bit more Impressionism and stuff, your marks, your color marks, your, you know, strokes, but color marks, what we call them, your marks stay a little less precise and 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 perfect and the edges will fracture a bit more and so sometimes I like them to fracture and not be quite so perfect and you see me in other things I'll take it and hold the brush very flat and drag it so that I'll get a fracturing of the actual shoreline and I like that as well okay so let's take some of these some of these colors, greens and yellows and burnt umbers and stuff that are real close to what we have there. Let's develop that water just a bit more right there. Right there on that reflection, just a touch more. Um, maybe a bit darker. It's, you know, getting a little darker is what's going to really give you your, your feeling of your water. So let's uh, pull that angle heading out that way. We're going to have those trees and stuff on there. And uh, so we'll have some nice pull downs also for some reflections. But we also want to push some of that water, the color of the water, in, 
into this area here so you're going to get the little ripples from the wind that's how we're going to paint those we're going to take this a little more blue here a little bit of burnt sienna in that if it goes too too blue get some burnt sienna in it we're going to narrow down here let's get a I'm going to use some extender here, not to blend. This is going to cause my color to slide, and that's what I want it to do. I want, see how it slides now? Slides really easy because the extender is uh, really slippery, and I want to make that slippery onto the paint here and just cause that to slide. I want to break that up a bit here. And, you know, when I'm working along a line like this, I end up doing it several times, like I said to you before, to really give a nice, uh, a nice uh, look to it, which is what I want to do, give a nice look to it. So I usually end up doing it a few times. I'm going to take some of that color, maybe right around the corner here. This is where, you know, I don't always look at the photo. If I don't like that setup of that corner, I'll make my own make the lake kind of wrap around that corner there a bit which gives a you know a little different look to it which is what I like so V shape so if these are coming this way this is coming this way here and we'll just put a few V shapes and we gotta pull some down strokes there as well okay some down strokes as well in just a minute because you know, I just don't always take that big brush and like I told you before and pull down. You know, you can, there's a lot of them. And I did that for years and there's nothing wrong with that. We take a big brush and we pull down like that. But that isn't always, that smooths it out. That isn't always what you see. I mean, you know, when you see that here, yeah, you're going to see some pulls downs here. But you're going to see very clear color exchanges between the light and the dark here on these blues and these skies and we have to we have to paint those in so we don't want to pull down too much here because we want to be a little bit more accurate with our water and but we're going to let the strokes you know be a, a little bit more uh, um, I want to say uh, casual here okay but we don't want to just grab a brush and pull down I did that for many, many years, and I loved it. Like I said, some of my favorite paintings are that way. But that's not reality. That's quick, and that's easy, and that's fun. But it's not always reality in, into a painting. So uh, I'm going to just come in, and that's going to be a bit dark, but that's kind of right in the ballpark of the hue I want, the color I want. Just need to lighten it up a bit here and uh, so I'm going to do just some rough edges here and I'll go back in and refine some of that in just a bit here but just some rough pulls of that color there okay for that sky and stuff in there um, a bit of that color streaking through in here and uh, but then we're going to go lighter 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 up around your eight or your nine back up here and let it start to distort that hillside there just a bit now if you look at the photo here when you take something like that we've got a lot of um and i covered it all up there so you should see it it's awesome no we'll wipe that back so you got a lot of this fracturing of the water right along that edge remember what i showed you how i like to do it before is i take a brush when this area in, is dry and i just drag along that edge like that and fracture some of those colors and i repeat this several times to get that look that fracturing of the of the color so i'll go with the blues and then i'll go back with my greens and stuff and i'll go back with blues several times to get some of that fracturing of that color there and uh, and I will do that this is what's going to give me the the water here you know, the water that I want when I'm all done and we'll grab a bit of this line 
this fracture of that just a bit. Now, again, I put on too much, and I'm going to come back and take some of that out. That's the way I like to do it. So I'll take some dark and take some of that out. Here, I paint back and forth like that with tones and setting up those tones. All right, so that's that set up. I'm gonna put some light. We're gonna take some of these nice grays here. Nice gray, kind of on the red side there. So I'll add some yellow and some, some light here. We'll get this grays right up a little closer to what that is there, a little more yellow and stuff into that. Real close, a little closer. And with lights coming from the left, so this will be our light struck plane here. We'll let that drop into a receding plane. We'll put a few lights here onto a few other little rocks out here around like that. I'm, by, I'm gonna have to make some of these look a little smaller, but We'll do that. I'm going to, and I increased the size of this one here. So let's just drop that in. Let's drop one right in there. Try to vary the sizes of placement. Try, if you're a left brain painter like me, man, we'll put them all on the same plane too. So we want to not do that. We want to vary those a bit. We want some of this burnt sienna green here, a little bit of brown, here some of this, maybe a bit of blue in that as well. Nice modeled into the brush. Let's work some of that color. That's just a touch green. Let's get a bit more burnt sienna in it. And we see those tones coming right back in here, right in between our rocks, right up to the edge of those blues. Here, tap those back through here. Just kind of tap those along in there. That'll break up the big, the big areas of rocks and make them a little smaller. Like I say, I always paint things too big. That's just what I do. I like to do that. And then I paint them down into position. Normally with the dark, I like to shape everything. Not everything, but I like to shape a lot of my painting, my objects with the dark. So I put on things and kind of draw and shape with the darks here and add some of these other tones back up here like that. So you see that, you see that kind of developing in there. And we have to decide if we're gonna make this be water or not. It's, it's an easy, easy thing to do. Uh, it's an optical thing. Uh, you create the water and you create like a rock and if I want this rock to go in the water I create that 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 uh, sienna color and I pull it in that line right like that and leave that other rock leave the rock color right there on top lighter on the top the sienna kind of color of what we're using for the bottom of the water and stuff here goes underneath so you see a little bit of the rock underneath the water and you break the break it so it's a, a bit more of the burnt sienna underneath and it is a um, bit lighter on top so if I come down right down here like this brace my hand here for a second pull down and stop at that line that I'm developing there I put that's the water line there of the rock for these rocks here right there like that see and so we'll need to go back and and put some more color into the underside here but we'll do that and um yeah that's how you i mean and you, of course you refine it a little bit more and we're going to want to have some of these siennas and stuff coming out a little further than the blue right there but that's all you're going to want to do. And then, uh, you know, you can carry some of your reflections and stuff further in as well. Let's get that a little bit more light. Nice light edge of that rock right there. Build that up. I really like it if I can get a nice light rock here. And uh, nice light, light rock with a lot of interest to it here. And... 
see, I'll use my brush flat. Now, you can go to a smaller one and stuff, too, but I like to use, you know, like I said so many times, I follow a lot of sergeant and a lot of the masters, the impressionistic masters that always say use as large a brush for a particular color passage as you can. Get as large a brush as possible in there and let it do its thing. And that keeps your painting less stiff. And boy, as a left brain painter, that, that really helped me. You know, really helped me uh, to get a, a bit more casual in, uh, in my paintings and stuff. So let's just drop that light down there on that one. So this would be something that, uh, you know, I, out in the field, you know, we're supposed to be with this whole series kind of like, you know, since we've all been locked up inside, we're supposed to be, this is what's keeping us, uh, you know, imagining that we're going out plain air and painting something. So out in the field, I wouldn't put this much into, uh, into the work of those rocks. I capture quite a bit of them and then, you know, I, I get out of there. Um, and you go back to the studio to refine them a bit more, you know, what you want to do to refine. Mine are a bit samey same, so I've got to change some of that, but um, like I might push some of this rock color down below here, pull some of that down here, and so I start to break some of this up here. And any of your siennas, like I'm doing now, will push the, the rocks under the water, see? Siennas, burnt siennas, a little green, a little blue, all those colors, those tones, and you work them multiple times, will push these rocks under the water there. And uh, now you see how that still stayed wet, moved really easy with my finger. Uh, that's because I'm using so much paint. I had a nice, wonderful question from uh, uh, one of the, you know, painters, and um, I said the colors just always seem to dry, and yours always seem to stay so wet. Well, no, they're not. They, but wherever my color's thickest, like right in here, if I'm using really thick colors, yes, then they stay wet. If I don't use thick colors, they'll dry. They'll, you know, so thing is use a lot of thick colors now other you know all acrylics are different all of them are different some are made some are made to dry fast heritage is made not to dry fast it dries at a moderate to slow pace because uh, it has glycols in it extenders in it um, and so it dries at a slower rate than a lot of other acrylics some acrylics are made to dry really fast because that's the techniques that those acrylic painters use. I use a lot of these types of techniques and so I wanted the heritage to dry just a little bit slower. It's still acrylic, it's still gotta dry, that's the thing. You know, it's, it, it, uh, it still has to dry. Um, so it will, uh, and, it, and it will do that, but in, depending on the humidity and stuff that you have. But uh, it does dry slower than a lot of others out there and all acrylics dry differently so I'm just pushing some of that siennas and stuff in there and that helps set those rocks back a little bit more to the water and you can create any kind of little reflections which we will do there that will you know help your water immensely um, I want to come back up and so now I've got a, a pretty good idea um, there's some areas like, well, let me just put a, a darker, I like to set in a real dark and a violet, blue, burnt sienna, real dark darks up here. This gives me a, a great idea here about um, what my darks, forward darks in my painting are going to be. These are the darker, richer colors, and uh, that's the, those real core darks. And those are what really advance through your painting here. They're these core darks. Get rid of a couple of these holidays. Light colors of the of the board coming through there. Okay. And uh, then I can uh, decide on these trees. I'll, I'll put a, a again, I'll, I'll start the suggestions of them. I'm going to go with the, the um, you can see the greens that are here, quite modeled up um, here. But uh, some Hansa 
touch of black, maybe a touch of that green here, just to model that, maybe a bit of burnt umber here. That's a pretty green, kind of matches that those greens that you see in there. And uh, let's just pick out a couple clumps of them. Lighter, imagine the light coming in this way. Hit a few clumps, let's stay away from that pine edge there just a bit. Let them diminish as they come back here. Let it just diminish a few little hits of it. A little bit heavier right up there. And let that just kind of diminish down. Let's uh, brighten up a bit. A little bit more Hansa, a little light. We'll be looking for this lighter green that you see right out there. So that's not too bad. Let's just push some of those areas in. Now you can block it, block paint it as well, whatever you like. I like to use the corners of the brush and stuff, but block painting works well for these types of trees where you just pull and block in the color. And a lot of artists use those and, and, and they really do work. Now I got a little heavy there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to use the corner here, let that fade out. I don't worry about that being too heavy. I just take a color. It doesn't even have to be the same color, but a little darker value. That's why I like acrylics, and I'll just back it out, block it back out like that here. And work those edges, soften those out just a bit here. And again, you know, you've got to remind yourself you're working fast, you're working very impressionistic and fast because you don't have much time and you take this after you've got this then you can work more depth into it let's take a little violet and green and uh, that's a nice deep dark a little burnt sienna and burnt umber into that let's just push through a bit here that's uh Kind of a pretty color. A little bit of yellow into that here. Pretty little green tone in there. Push that back a bit. I like to paint back and forth. And uh, you know, the thing is, if you get rid of some of your sky holes, boy, you could just go touch some of them back in. You can go do that. Um, no worries. Yeah, get just a bit more of that out there. There, like that. And there we go. I'm just gonna leave that uh, for just a moment. That's not done, but that gives me an idea, a nice working idea. I'm gonna take a little bit of a medium color of the green right back here. Gives me a, a good feeling for the light and dark there. Of that. I've got to shape it up a little bit better, but that's okay for right now. We'll work on that a little bit later, but I want to come back into um, some of my sky. Real light. Blue, white, ultramarine blue and white. Let's get some of this, maybe just a touch of that thalo in there. And... Uh, Work some of that back in. I like to go back into the edges of my trees there as well. The edges of the mountains. Kind of blur them in just a bit. There. You can see how that softens them in. Okay. And um, we're going to work these colors. And I've decided I am going to have a few clouds. Because I do like the few clouds. Now there's a bunch of ways that you can do clouds. The most important thing to remember is light's coming from the left. That's going to affect our clouds here as well. So if I decide I'm going to push up a little cloud here, I'm going to let that light come from the... Let's push that up a little higher right there. And uh, let that light come from the left. So whenever I put white or this light gray into my brush, I'm starting on the left. And then I start dragging it down, lifting the pressure and scumbling and scrubbing as I'm coming here to the uh, to the uh, uh, the right of it, and I'll streak a bit as I get down towards the end down there. Now you can take your finger, soften. You know, there's a lot of um, you know when you look at the the clouds, there's a lot of real fractured edges, and sometimes I do that. 
you know, not very often on an Alla Prima one, but sometimes I'll come in and fracture those edges and leave those nice fractured edges. Um, let's build this one up a bit more. So I have this lighter gray. It's a little grayed with some of the greens and blues. And I'll just push that one up. Some of this color pull in sideways there like that. Gives a nice little look. Let's add a few more little... As they go further back and become more atmospheric, they'll get smaller and smaller. Your touches will get smaller and smaller. Now, if you want the clouds to really pop off, this is what I do as I take some of my blues, some of my nice happy blues here. Not, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly the same blue, but I'll back paint right up to them, right up to the edge of those clouds there. Paint through them like that back painting out, popping out the whites a bit more, and you can set the whites back in. The lights, the light gray, it's not pure white, it's light, real light gray. You can set that back in, work those. We're saving the pure white here for just a little bit. Um, but you're going to have to, you know, you make cloud shallows. Let's strike in a nice forward light of this cloud, which is going to be the real forward one right here. So I'll put that lighter, a little bit more white into it right here, pull it down. Then we go a little bit more blue, maybe a touch of our dirty colors of our composition here, which gray it down just a touch. And those grays come right in on to the right side, which is our shadow side here. And I like, you know, the grays I use are usually uh, very reflective of the uh, or uh, um, of the um, colors of the composition. Don't just go grab a gray. Grab some of these greens and some of these colors. That makes your clouds up here go really nice with your composition. They don't look stark. So many people go up there and use a gray or some kind of violet and gray, um, and they look the clouds don't look part of the paint. This is the difference between what you might see in reality and what an artist does as a, as a painting. The artist will, I'm gonna push a little bit flat here. The artist will uh, paint the clouds into the painting, see? Um, and uh, they do that by incorporating the colors of the paintings into the clouds. Let's just, emulate a few little soft ones coming back up here like that let those sit back just kind of fade away into my little blues back there softer you can uh, we can direct the viewer by putting maybe a little bit more light of one right up here a little bit further back which is kind of nice i got this kind of v shape happening in there so i'll push a little bit more light and this is the impressionistic part of it. I'll take some paint and I'll just push that in there and let the brush calligraphy do it. You know, there was uh, um, basically, there was one modern day Western painter I absolutely love, and I've told you about him before, and you know, he said in one of his writings that his goal as an artist is to be able to capture the comport of the, 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 the basic shape and feeling of the cloud with a single brush stroke. And that is, that is so beautiful. That is really kind of a nice goal, what we have, what we do. Um, yeah, it, uh, and the, the more I get freedom like this with it, the more I like my clouds. The more I play with it and stiffen it, they just get stiffer and stiffer, and I don't like them. So I've learned to, you know, get a, to build them and do some nice things with them, but, uh, um, yeah, have some fun. Now, I haven't done this in a while. Why didn't you tell me? Um, step back. Remember, I have that camera about eight feet, six to eight feet, stepped back back there. Wanting, you should be getting up and taking a look at what's happening with your scene. And you see, we can, uh, we're can we developing it pretty well. It's coming pretty well. So, yeah, but let's not sit on our high horse here. Let's get going. Let's get some of our, back to some of our violets here and some of our lights here, a little bit of lights and a little bit of violets. And we'll pull some of this in, like this is gonna be snow, 
back up onto the, some of these mountains back here. Just pulling those edges of them. I'm going to sit back. Let's um, get a bit lighter. Not quite as light as the cloud, but you see a bit of that through there. That just like says, okay, there's a little bit of snow. Now, you don't have to have snow back there. I like snow. And uh, I like snow on my mountains, and I like that kind of look to them. So I like to add that. I'm going to take a bit of my darks and just break that up a bit. Pull some back the other way. There. Just kind of set that mountain back there. Bit of snow on it. Bit of light color here through. Try to soften those edges just a touch there. Get a bit of that. See, and it's just, it's very, it, it, so I've got all these nice grays, the blues, the grays, the little umbers, a little bit of violet here, and that just makes beautiful. Remember that the, the uh, light is coming from the left, so the lightest snow is going to be up here onto the left slopes of the mountain, and uh, then we can add a bit of the darker colors to the other side, a softer grayed violet here. Real soft gray to violet, maybe a little umbers in it if you need. Here, just to break that up a bit. Here, like that. Drop that in. It makes kind of a pretty. And this mountain should be a, just a touch darker than the other one there, so it uh, stays back a little further back. But, um, Let's build just a touch more light right up there. Here. And this is what I like. You know, so many times I used to, and I still do, I still, I, I love the scraper and the, the palette knife, painting palette knife mountains. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love it. But there's something about the brush work, the brush calligraphy that you put into a mountain, the pure understanding of it. and. I'm getting better and better at it, but still not where I want to be. But uh, I'm getting there with where I would like to be. Now I'm going to lighten that up just one little more, bit more, just so that it pulls up. It's the light that's going to help it pull up in front of the, the other mountain there. So we'll put a bit of that light there on those edges there. Sometimes, you know, that's, that's a dangerous little mark. See how it just keeps grabbing your, intention, your uh, attention? And sometimes I will leave that there, though, to, to force me to get more marks up into the more, front of the painting. But if it bothers me too much, I'll just take it out a bit. Yeah, but uh, it is, uh, it's a good thing to leave sometimes to uh, force you into doing uh, a little more work. You know, get a little bit more work there. All right, let's uh, keep going here. So we have that, and now we could we could put a, an atmosphere. Uh, we can take some of our light blue here, light light blue, and thin it. Let's thin it with a little bit of extender, so it gives you some time, and very thin, maybe a little extender in water. And yes, you can mix those two together. And let's just put a bit of an atmosphere over the back part of some of this mountain and this hill here. Now, this will look really light. It'll dry back down, okay? But you can see right there, it shoved the, um, shoved the, uh, those, that lines the hills further back. I'm going to pop these front mountains really forward here with a line right through here, nice doesn't have to be quite that stark, but so I'll, I'll just fracture the edge a bit. But see that nice color line right there, right there like that, helps bring that uh, this part of the painting farther forward, especially if I put a nice, like this is the light part of a cloud right here. Let it go really light right here, right like that. Put up the edge like that's a cloud right there going further back, but leave some textures. I mean, a good impressionist painter would leave some textures right in there. And uh, yeah, see how that 
that cloud that's right there and that push starts shoving this part of the hill forward through contrast. Here, we'll just, just carry that up and out. Like That's a nice little, nice cloudy day. It's building to rain here. It's a nice thing of living, um, I've lived all over. I spent half my life out on the West Coast and now I spent the last 20 years out on the East Coast and now I'm in the Plain States in the heartland of America and I really love it because you see so much more of the landscape out here than you do in a lot of other areas because of the because of the flatness of the of it you can see the clouds how they really go against the landscape there we go we'll just push a bit of that in there that's kind of nice a little bit of that cloud there and uh, now let's uh, let's keep going here let's uh, take some of our let's rework some of our yellows all of our, our nice yellows and burnt siennas burnt umbers greens these kinds of colors we'll come back through here and we'll work some of those remember I want those light kind of planes of these back here okay so we'll just drag and uh, push those angles of those back in there we'll pull some more greens down there but I'm putting on more paint this time let's get these a little brighter ones back up here pull those down right down in there let's get some good brights yellows sometimes you just do that you just leave that nice edge there I know that's hard <laughs> sometimes we just do that you just got to do it and let's get some green some burnt umber some yellows here and work these up and down slightly so we give the impressions of some of the trees go pull down just a few I'm using just the corner edge of this brush. You see, I've done a lot of painting with this. And that's what I, I, I tend to do. Of course, when in a bigger uh, you know, studio painting, I'll use more things, more tools. Uh, but in a painting like this, where I wanna just show you a color and working and you know atmosphere and stuff more than anything else, I, I tend, I don't switch tools too often. I do love my scraper. Like, you know, this little scraper, you know, there's nothing like taking some of these blues and this stuff and these scrapers and you just lay it down like that. Look at that little violet that comes in there. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you get that. Let's take some of these blues and these violets and you get those, those marks and we can lay those down here like this right at that angle and it just does great things and then you can take your brush and just work the edges help you know move those edges a bit and uh, it just gives you just so much interest into the painting see all that interest that's there so you know and that's the one thing that you know for those of you that are learning boy you know there's you know, changing your brush sometimes doesn't do it as much as really changing a tool, like going to that scraper. When I ended, when I started using that scraper, you know, I, used, I started out with like a larger pal, uh, painting knife. It's called a painting knife. And uh, then eventually going to the scraper. The scraper's just fantastic. So I'm, I'm really kind of deviating from the photo here, but I like these kinds of, these kinds of, angles and pulls of the hills and the colors here like that I like that and I'm as I build more interest into the front I'd be able to come back here and add a few other little things and streaks of color you can see each time I build this is getting a little bit more and a little bit more uh, here interest don't forget you don't always pull at an angle pull some down pull some nice you know take your brush here right on the edge and give yourself a nice you know horizontal there like on an edge of that uh, shoreline there you know and, and, and a good scraper artist we would pick it up grab just the edge of that and touch the edge to create some of that 
you know, receding edge back there, that look. But you can create it and slide it and do all kinds of stuff to create that light little edge there. That shoreline here. Pull some of that down there. And, uh, yeah, a lot of different little ways there to, to do things. Let's uh, take just a bit of this light and that yellow, just a touch of it back up in here, change that up a bit. Let some of them, I'm watching the exchanging of my color planes there too, so I might want to take just a bit of this, yeah, Dave, don't touch that yet. Let's get a, let's lighten it up. Remember, if you move back, get back into your atmospherics. So we'll atmosphere that just a bit and touch just a few small little vertical touches, L smaller, because these are like little trees back here. Just little ideas of them, okay? Like that, just to, just to get an idea of those there. Let's take some burnt umber. Now you gotta remember, blue, burnt sienna, some greens. You gotta remember over here, you can get a few more darks. It's a, few, it's a little bit closer here and uh, you can pull a little bit farther I like that when some of this burnt sienna just comes off out of there get you a bit of a bit of difference see as I'm building that color see it's uh, getting a bit more dramatic here sometimes it takes you three, four, five times to build that color like that and leave some of those little marks. It's really hard to leave some of those little marks and not smooth it out. I might just come in there and tap a few with some more yellows and stuff just to break that. But you know, you want to leave more brush calligraphy as you come forward. You want more calligraphy. That's the thing, right? That's what we like. We want that calligraphy coming forward. Let's leave some of those yellows here. Leave some of those lights and stuff there that's coming farther forward. A bit of those light touches would look nice. Maybe right out here. You could put some rocks, some edges, some mountain edges, like, you know, the photo over there shows some rocks and stuff coming down. You can certainly do that if you have time. You can um, drop those in or, you know, like if you're going to take this, you know, up a little bigger into a studio painting and stuff, then definitely you can come back here and add a few little rock shapes and stuff. A few little nice uh, uh, verticals really help the, the look of the painting there. Pull some lights. Light pulls there to give them some rocks and stuff going on. And you can develop them up a little bit more, especially if you have a bigger painting. You know, for a smaller painting, yeah, you just might do some simple rock structures. Look at that. I just, that's my left brain. Make them almost the same. Let's change this one a little bit. I tell you, that's my habit. Now, see, I put that on, and then for me, you know, for me, what is, I get the majority of the interest to something like that through the dark. That's where I let the, I paint the actual structure with the dark rather than the light here. That's where I feel I get a, a little bit better look to it. And you paint it kind of quick there. There, like that. Let's add a, a little bit of a rock structure down here by the front of this. That'll bring a touch more interest right up there. By that front water's edge there. A bit more. So you can see some of that. That's good. That's going good. Step back, take a look at that. Yeah, you see that's developing. So we're an hour, 20 minutes into the painting here. You know, and it would be uh, now time to develop a little bit more heading back up into the foreground. I kind of like everything that's going there. You know, I even, I'm not really too uh, bothered by some of that, uh, you know, and I, I do like to leave that valley, you know, into the valleys, you get more mist and stuff, you know, landscape painters, we know that. 
and leaving some of that mist it's there I might even you know increase some of that uh, that mist and stuff up into that area there that could be a little lighter that's a little blue there could be a little lighter you could use a little extender a little water just so your brush slides with it glaze that on just ever so lightly there push that mountain kind of mist and when you ever you miss something like that and you put that haze that haze in between things you that really helps you with your depth through the painting here too so yeah you can see how that does set that back and you know you can haze up some of those points and stuff there it's really nice we could get some more real light go more of the Lewis Ashton night and really put that nice light reflected right up here then we got to come back and put some clouds in the water and you would work your water again but see that just pulls your eye back in there and uh, and it's a building process that's what I like to have I like this building process that I use in the paintings and uh, let's put a bit of that light right up over here along that shoreline be a little careful I should be using my mall stick here to hold my hand straighter but it's just a little painting it's just a little idea of the painting so we'll just have a bit of fun see that all creates the realism and it's all in how much time these are all wonderful little techniques draw that light draw that light draw that edge see I like that unblended dragging fracturing edge there of that light let's push just a bit here over to this side right like that that's good let's deepen okay let's get going here let's deepen the front of this water a bit more right up here and I might have to get out some more ultramarine blue or switch over to adding some violet to some of this let's get light a little violet let's get a little deeper in color right up here that again repeating this a little deeper in the tone and you, I could be, let's pull this over just a bit. See, I'm a little bit blue-green, so it could have a little bit of violet in it. And, of course, I'm not copying this other photo. So if I just, if I come in the ballpark and I like the color, that's what I do. I just leave it. But I'll put a little more blue-green into that. I mean, a little more violet into that. And you can see you can hit that color closer. You could actually get a little more violet right in there. This is where you could start looking at the water and saying, okay, you know, uh, you could start looking for smaller areas. We got the main area blocked in, you know, up and along these clouds right up here that would be on the photo. They'll get a little darker right up there, and that does help you pull forward. Um, you know, so it's it's all a balancing act looking through the colors. Let's push some of this here right up in through here. Let's go right up to the edge of our... Sometimes I'll drag that right forward, a little bit of that blue, even though I don't see it maybe in the photo. I'll put a little bit right up, and you didn't really see that, did you? Sorry about that. But I put a little bit right up in there, and uh, just dragging that through, and that just helps you with the, with the impressionism that that water is going quite a bit, you know, up forward and up and into the rocks. And, of course, if I put... You know, if you leave that shadow really dark right here, that's where that will show all this in water. And so, you know, the second that I put down any light, let me show you. I'll create a shoreline right here. The second that you put down any light, it's all optical stuff. Um, the second I put down any light right down here, a nice light right in here, I'm going to stop the water. So we could say the water stops right in here here like this so it comes up to like this little sandy sandy area right here and if I model that and just pull back a bit I, I insist I increase that nice look of that here we'll pull some of that through so it, it's 
So when I do that, see here like this, and then you can come and model that a little bit, you're creating a shoreline right there, right? And we can model that a bit, drag some color, model that a bit. And then, uh, then what I'll do is take a bit of the, the um, burnt sienna, which I want, the yellow, or excuse me, blue, burnt sienna, yellows, some Indian yellow is really pretty in these types of situations because it's a, not a powerful yellow. And I create, and so you'll see in here, see these are the colors you want in here. And uh, so they create the edge of the water here. There, right like that. So the water comes up right in there like that, see? that pre Those pretty tones, that Indian yellow, so pretty in there makes it look like you know what you're doing and uh, we'll carry that through just a little bit of that right out there like that build up this light edge just a touch more here like that so and this is all in shadow see so this is uh, I mean we could go more direct light and really pop that up but that will be like how you do your water's edge and then you're going to simulate that like I said here before by uh, taking uh, some of your shadow here now kind of imagine a, a plane now you, this is what's this is what's very important you've got to imagine where that plane is of the water line and it's got a it's got to uh, stay on the same plane. That's where the realism is going to, or uh, you know, the better look to it is. So imagine it, it's sitting here along that plane there. So, you know, it's it's got to be kind of a straight line here of pulling down, and this is the rock sitting underneath the water here, see? So, and it's got to sit back like that and kind of match that that plane and so that's the one thing I spent so much time studying and looking at the rocks under the water the structures underneath the water there here and there'll be more of a, a, def, a definite line I'm not getting quite that definite line like I did earlier there so I have to do it again but uh, yeah you're gonna want to push some of these back there like that and um, you know we build their structure blues and uh, some of your burnt siennas and uh, umbers there you build those rock structures under the water there and we'll have to make the three planes of the rocks like I've showed you before you know and we'll put a few more little rocky structures and marks and stuff in there and uh, yeah, that's going. Might be good to, uh, you know, and I see how all of them, I got them all moving in the same line. That's not good. <laughs> we want to, that's my left brain, you know. I, I know to look at that. They're all moving in the same line, uh, all straight across there. You, uh, boy, you don't want to do that. We want to bring some of them out at a, at a different angle here. That's better here so some of them you know so they're not always on the same flat plane there Dave let's join this one back up a little bit more like that's gonna be there that's better sometimes you know when you're you get wrapped up in painting your light source we get wrapped up and these rocks all become the on the same planes so we have to Come back a couple times and fix them there. So let's pull this one a little bit further light coming back this way. Here. That's better. Oh, they mix up a bit. And then darker color underneath. So find your darker. I, I do like those siennas. Darker colors. Underneath, that's just a little bit too much sienna. Here, figure out where your water line is. Do your darker color underneath. There. 
see that rock underneath the water? That's where you get your nice transparency. Start to see that rock under the water there. And, uh, yeah, flatten this out a bit. There. Get some of those nice... It's the prettiest to work these colors several times. Get those siennas in there. Get a, a bit more horizontal as you head up towards the shoreline there. Right up into the shore. But, uh, yeah. Work some of those lights. Work some of these lights. Get the, you know, like I showed you in the other rocks. Get the values up there. Get their light and receding planes. The light struck plane, the receding plane, the shadow plane here. And if I really wanted to do great rocks, I'd go to a little smaller brush here, like that. And, um, you know, and then if you're, you know, in the studio, if you're doing studio with the rocks, you would even put in the rock shot, sometimes the rock shadows in the water underneath. And that gives you a better, um, a, I want to say it's a, a little bit better transparency. So you would imagine, so sometimes the third plane of the rock shadow would be underwater. And uh, it gives you a better depth and transparency to the rocks, which is kind of fun. Here, so you might have that as well. But uh, yeah, that's kind of nice. And we'll get just a touch of these smaller little touches of shadows and stuff back there. Let those just kind of model along in there. I'm not bothered too much by that tree now. It all dried down. I could uh, put in some, a few other little marks of light here. Not much, just a few other little marks of the light here. Hitting a few branches, especially right up there on that left side. That's where the light is coming, there. Um, you know, there's more of a mark of the tree itself, the tree trunk, and uh, Sometimes I, I, I paint those in more specific. Sometimes I just let them just sit with the movement of what I've done so far. So take those, put in too much, and paint out a bit. Pat through. Let some of those just sit in there, just lightly. Um, you know, all kinds of ways. And if I was in, you know, of course, I am in the studio, but if when you're taking the painting to the studio painting, I'd work these a little more. I'd even put places where you'd see the tree trunk up into the, you know, the top of the of the uh, painting up in here, and uh, we do a little bit more. But that's that's pretty that's pretty okay for right now. Let's go back. Now some of that dark water's dried, so that's good. Let's go with our medium blue here, and. Uh, Push that color in. That could be a, a touch more of my blue blue. Have a bit of yellow into that. So let's get a bit brighter. That's better. And let this just kind of come forward a bit here like that. Break the edge. Don't blend them out. Break the edge. Let it sit as an optical edge there like that. Okay. And um, yeah, then we'll go a bit lighter back here a bit lighter here right up against the edge of those hills there let that streak just a bit so that's your sky and stuff going on there and uh, like I said before we can just drag the edge of this with some of this light to create those shimmers there create the bit of shimmers into the water there which is kind of nice and you know you know if you get too much of them to you know paint out just take a little bit of dark and tap through and paint out be the impressionist there just paint a few of those out and uh, 
we can uh, let some of these darks come through. You'll see in the uh, photo you get a lot of darks. And there's my, my left brain coming out again, lining those all up. Boy. But I, I tend to go back and forth like this between my light and dark to set some of those areas. So I don't want to do too much that I lose some of my reflection that's there. But that just puts in a little more movement into the water right across there. Now in the um, original, in the photo, we have an area here, nice yellows, burnt siennas, yellows, a little darker. Let's go a little darker yet. Yeah, burnt siennas and yellows. Grab some of this tone in here. And uh, uh, that actually are, are the rocks and stuff, but we'll just give a, a, a touch of a pull down here that gives you know, good reflections pull down. Uh, and that also is a nice calming of the water. But uh, so they, they pull down. So we'll pull down just a bit here. Okay. And you can soften it side to side, but a few pull downs like that just give you a better kind of a reflection. And you know that, we know that. So I'll look for a few areas of those to pull down, because we know that. But I like the movement, the shimmering and the movement of the water in between some of that as well. So that's also as nice, just get a bit of that color, it's kind of pretty in there touch a bit of that up there even though sometimes it's you know it's supposed to be darker into the water I'll take a color and then touch it up there in a corresponding spot and then that really helps the believability of what it is that you're painting you know all right so now what we have to do is take some of our blues and whites and some of these grays and we're just going to emulate back in here some of the clouds and that are into the water some of the colors of the clouds and the feeling of the clouds I'm not going to be perfect precise with them but just the feeling of them and they will go all the way to the edge of the mountain here so we'll I'm going to leave some of that blue but some of it will go right to the edge of the mountain and let's really, let's bring back out this point right up in here a little bit more. So we'll reflect that point. And I'm just kind of scumbling these on here. A little wet, a little loose. Sometimes I do it over a layer of extender uh, to get some, uh, you know, some, some more uh, movement and stuff because it's slippery. And uh, let's get a bit of that light right in there. So I'm not going to try to repeat everything perfect, but uh, we'll grab some of that movement. Not quite as light, but some of that movement, that feeling of that movement. And uh, we'll let it go darker, some of this light. And right out over here, I'm going to put on too much right here. And I'm going to take it out with some of our blues from our shoreline, the blues and the other colors here. Right from the shoreline here. Take some of that out, just that edge. Let some of that blue come in. And right along some of that edge there. And then right back into my siennas and blues and greens, the darker colors. We'll put some of those in there as well. Try to stay out of your rock, Dave. So again, see, I, I paint them again and again and again. But in the photo, you'll see these blues and stuff come right up. See the, the blues and stuff of the sky come right up into there. Now, they are a, a little bit more distinct. So if I want to go a little closer to realism here, I would take some of this dark in and out, stopping, creating that undulating edge there. Uh, 
against some of that light and stuff there to you know to capture that um, that particular look you know so you can undulate that and tap these lines into here start getting a little smaller taking some of this and of course the hill color that uh, is in the uh, photo the reference is darker than the hill color here that I am using in this particular painting so we have to take that into account for the water but some of that darkness there looks pretty good and we might want to add just a bit of it right in there we're artists this is ours right so we can add just a bit of that so this is where I start to look at my painting because it's a painting it's not a photo right it's a painting always tell yourself it's a painting make it a painting leave some of your brush strokes and stuff like that and and uh, so you can start seeing some of the stuff there and make it a painting and there you go there's an idea of it an idea of it I mean I would go in and I would work this I would definitely not put those rocks in so much parallel uh, I'd probably step those off a little bit I'd put a little bit more into there maybe a bit more into um, the clouds and you know if you want to get a really nice reflection if you really want great reflections go over to my online class totaling the inlet that one is an absolute glass I painted the the St. John's uh, glacier inlet with a fishing boat trolling across it and I made the water like glass and uh, it really is a great painting um, and I, I just love it to this day I just uh, just absolutely love it matter of fact it hangs right up over there I just love it um, but uh, you can pick out certain areas like right here that little bit of that cloud that we had right in there I can come in and emulate that one a, a bit better and some of this light and this movement right out there but you pick out that cloud there's one that's right out over there so we can pick out that just a, a touch more into the water the movement the reflection of that particular area just a bit more and you'll you'll get a you know a better a better reflection of it but you know remember the more and more you make that reflection the more and more it becomes about the water and the reflection than it does about the overall journey and I like that journey I like I like that journey right back there. I like to follow that Lewis Ashton Knight on that journey right back there. That's where I like you to go. Right around the corner, right back there. Let's go right around the corner. Let's take that and go right back there around the corner. That'll look great. And uh, so it's not about the it's not about the beautiful clouds, even though. You can paint them but see just little modeling movements like that just add so much go back and forth between your water it's a fun little painting this would make a, a you know another painting that would be very nice if I you know I do thumbnails like this and then take them up a bit bigger you could you know lighten and put a little bit more uh, interest there into the ground that's all up to you but you get a good idea how to do it and uh, you know the general rule is colors this is the color then it, everything starts to become more like the background as it goes back and gets softer and stuff and you know step back take a look at it yeah that's looking that's looking pretty good anyway thanks for joining me you have a great time I mean I had a great time you know like I say before with everything if there's something else you want to see how to approach it with acrylics like this there's a lot of fun it's acrylics are a lot of fun as long as you don't get wrapped up into this I gotta blend it the colors gotta stay wet no it doesn't doesn't have to stay wet you were optical painters were more tone painters and let me tell you you know I love it there's like right now I don't know if you've heard some of them my grandkids are here my four granddaughters are here when my wife has them running around upstairs I hear them upstairs I hear them running around and I have no fear of them coming down here into my studio and stuff everything that I use it's clean it's non-toxic and uh, it's a great safe environment and they paint a lot with me right over there um, and it, it really is great it really is great to uh, be able to do that everybody has their own likes and dislikes though
you know, and we're all different, and we're all different artists and stuff, and I like it this way. But, uh, yeah, I might put a little more color right in here, a little darker color. I'll fix up some of my rocks, and then I'll take a picture of it, and we'll post that, okay? And uh, you can find that over on the Jansen Art online. We're posting it over there. And again, you know, we have a couple of websites. Everything is up into the, this video description, all the links. You can go over there for everything that I do. And if there's something that doesn't, that doesn't answer the question, just ask the question in the comments. No, I try to get them. I try to read them a couple times a day. Sometimes I take a day off, but I try to answer those for you, okay? And we're here to help you. I don't like people to be frustrated. We're supposed to be having fun, right? Okay, I'll see you on the next one. Maybe we'll do that seascape or a seascape landscape combination we'll see all right i was thinking about big sur i'm thinking oh, i haven't painted big sur out in california coast for a long time maybe we'll do that all right see you guys later